the pop tap kit. All right, folks, we're gonna turn we're gonna turn a cheap pop bottle into a tapping system. First thing we're gonna do is open the box. So you just cut along this seam right here, like in all our kits, and let's see what we have inside. So here we have our pop tea kit, which is exactly the same as the one that you can buy separately on the site. Underneath that is our picnic tap kit, the same as the one you can buy on the site separately. Then there's the standard regulator that comes with all our kits. All the regulators come with a little extra washer, just in case you lose the one that's in here. And then one gray gas quick disconnect. And this, you can recycle. This box, you can recycle. So just open up your disconnect, open your pop tea kit, use this bag for something else. Recycle and reuse. We'll recycle the box, or maybe you wanna put some marbles in the box, I don't know. So then we'll open up our two posts here, open up our picnic tap, open up our flow control. Actually, now that I think about it, why not keep the box and just, when you're not using it, you can just store all the parts in it like that. <laughs> why don't I just sell them like this? It'd be a lot less packaging. Unfortunately, due to manufacturing, you can't do it that way. So to assemble the pop tea, the first thing you do, I like to put the yellow on top because that's where the beer comes out. Put the red one on the side for gas. Finger tighten is good enough. The dip tube is already cut to 14 inches, the standard length for a pop bottle. And then that's done. I have a whole separate video where I completely take this apart and show you how to clean it and everything. So if you want to watch that, click here. So now we can insert the dip tube into our pop bottle. Each kit also comes with one little sample of keg lube. You only need the smallest little dab on the posts just to make things slide on super easy. You can put a little bit more inside to disconnect. What's inside these makeup jars is the uh, Haze Lubrafilm Plus. So then we can set up our regulator. It's as simple as screwing this into here. And you want to tighten it until it gets facing downwards because you want the CO2 cartridge to sit that way. Then we have our CO2, which we sell separately, mainly due to shipping reasons. So then you got your 16 gram cylinder, turn the knob all the way counterclockwise. Although if you forget, as long as you have this on first, this will stop the gas from coming out. Reverse the direction of your hands and let's see how well I do. Oh, didn't even make a sound that time. <laughs> the one I did for the growl tap kit was terrible. <laughs> so now we can put the regulator on the bottle. Just pull back on the collar like that and get past the little black O-ring there. Once you're past there, you don't have to hold the collar anymore and then you can just push it on, simple as that. Uh, you can pressurize the bottle right away. Here, I'll tip it at an angle so we can see. And just like that, you can see the bubbles going in there. And we just want this at a serving pressure of about five PSI. So we'll leave that like that, Here's your firm bottle. So then we'll put our picnic tap together very quickly. So you can take note, there's a little line there. You wanna push in about that far, and then you know you're all the way in. So here I can see there's the number five. So I just wanna go a little bit past that. So you wanna kinda of push it in there. These ones can be kinda of stiff to get in there. These new flow control ones, these are a lot easier, but you can take note there again. You can see some writing so you know if you're all the way in. You can kinda of feel it go past the two little rings. The picnic tap, you might wanna make sure that's tight. Flip it around, and then you just shove it right in there, just like that. And that's fully assembled. I have a whole separate video about the picnic tap, so if you wanna go in depth and take it completely apart, you can watch that and be posted here above. The flexible dip tube allows you to tip the bottle onto its side. You just wanna take note of that it's in the little notch at the bottom. And you also wanna keep the CO2 facing downwards, otherwise your uh, beverage might get a little frosty from the CO2 getting in there directly. So now let's move to the kitchen and see how to clean this thing. When it comes to cleaning your kegs or kits, a good rinse with hot water is often enough, as long as you do it right away when the keg is empty. If you want a deeper clean, we have these handy tablets from Kraftmeister that do an amazing job. Look how well it works on this stained coffee mug. Just fill your keg with hot water and pop in a tablet. Let it sit for at least 10 minutes, and then you can flush your taps to your heart's content. After that, just rinse everything thoroughly with hot water and set it out to dry. All our kits are easy to disassemble for a more thorough rinsing and can be reassembled just as quick. Now, if you're a hardcore beer nerd and you really want to get in there, you can completely disassemble your taps and soak them in PVW. But then again, if you're a hardcore beer nerd, you already know that. If you plan on storing the beer for more than a few days, you will want to use a sanitizer to get the oxygen off the walls of the keg. I always have a spray bottle on hand to do this. 
just fill up with hot water and mix in about one milliliter of star sand for your average spray bottle. <laughs> and once you have your first pop tap kit up and running, you uh, can buy some extra pop tea kits to have multiple bottles full of whatever beverages you like. And then just move from one bottle to the next, as simple as this. Once you start using your pop tea kit all the time, you might not want to use these little 16 gram cartridges anymore because they do get a little pricey over time. Great for portability, but if you like, you can buy the SodaStream conversion kit that's sold separately that allows you to take the same regulator that you have, you just screw the hose into here. So then instead of going directly onto there, you can unscrew this and screw it into the SodaStream adapter. That goes on there. And then the SodaStream bottle can just be spun into there. Basically, you could just hand tighten this. But if you have a thumb wrench or a spanner, you can do it like that. Uh, for more information about this, I have a completely separate video about the SodaStream conversion kit. So that's just about it for the PopTap kit, the cheapest and easiest way to keg just about anything.